Fred Fricky, bed and breakfast quarterly. The victim has multiple blunt force injuries. There's significant bruising and abrasions. If I catch you involved in any illegal activity at all, I will nail your ass. Plasma products are desperately needed by people with hemophilia, severe burns, or trauma. I look into suspicious customer activity and transactions escalated by employees all over the company. So the segregation laws on the books down here make good sense to you? Some of your teammates didn't take the evacuation seriously. Go, baby! Go, go! Our products consistently outperform the competition. And these pancakes may be the best in the county. Excuse me, Mrs. Roosevelt, one last question. Yes. Do you think polio has affected your husband's mind? It is now a bad time. So I've been an agent for Carl over 20 years. Carl worked for AFI for uh, 20 years. Not only was he the top booker in commercials, but he became uh, one of the top bookers in training films. He could sell anybody anything, and it was his personality, and he's just easy to get along with, and he makes you comfortable, and you want to, you want to make him happy. <laughs> so. Uh, as he was a great salesman, great salesman. Made for TV movies and episodics, and that was Carl's true love. He really wanted to do that, and he worked very, very hard to do that. On the side of being able to um, close the deal, Carl was way above. And then what he did was he would take his experience from all of these jobs and he turned around and he taught other people how to do it. And then I got the call the next day that he had the stroke. On the evening of September 15th, 2005, Carl McIntyre experienced a massive stroke in the left hemisphere of his brain. This area is sometimes called the zone of language. Approximately 85% of the left hemisphere of his brain was damaged. When I first walked into the hospital, into the room where Carl was, um, he was laying down on his back, just staring up. Um, he could not move, um, or his right side was paralyzed at the time. Um, Elizabeth was there, and she was very frightened. And I remember standing on the left side of Carl, and Michael was on the right side of Carl. And to this day, because of the way Carl's brain was being injured at the time, Carl could see and hear and remember me, but he did not see and hear and remember Michael on the other side of him. When Carl had his stroke, it was devastating. It was devastating on a lot of different levels. Obviously, as a friend, it was horrible. But as one of our top commodities, that was, that was bad. There was a huge hole left in my talent pool. Physically, it doesn't look like anything's really the matter. Um, but he can't talk. Everything that Carl did involved speech, whether it was acting or sales. He was doing great in voiceovers. I mean, his whole life was his voice. I wish it were different because he really he really was a great asset to the business, and, um, and I miss not seeing him every day. I'm an actor. I'm, yes, and something happened, and I can't speak, and I can't read. Really <laughs> bad, <laughs> but I'm still trying. So when for Carl first came to us, he <clears throat> had difficulties with his articulation of speech and his ability to put words together in sentences. He started out with what we call classic Broca aphasia. It's a type of aphasia where the comprehension of language is much, much better than the ability to express. And Carl's language comprehension is superb. Carl was uh, enrolled in a couple of research projects that we were doing here. When he first came to me, it was, you know, one, two word utterances, lots of struggle to get the words out. His uh, progress is not only measurable, but it's amazing in the areas of speech and language. 
and of course he's always been a great communicator. He improved in a couple ways. He improved in his ability to use spoken language. Um, when I talk to Carl now, you don't get the same struggle um, just trying to get the words out. It's, it's smoother, there's longer sentences. I teach a class in aphasia uh, for graduate students who are in this program to become speech language pathologists. And every time I teach this class, I have people with aphasia come and talk to the class. Master's degree candidates in the field of speech language pathology. Um, and he spoke in a class particularly about aphasia. I asked Carl to come to class and give his presentation. And I didn't tell him very much other than that. And he impressed me deeply. Uh, the students were roaring. I was laughing. Uh, we were crying. People were riveted. Um, and you know, it, it's amazing to see someone who can't just talk easily and have a conversation and tell his story, be able to still effectively and very clearly tell his story with a combination of things. Gestures, moving around, writing on the board, uh, speaking, whatever it is. I thought that he had done such a terrific job that I asked him if he would be willing to come back and talk to a class of undergraduate students. He, he spoke to the master's students, master's degree students, at least three times, I think. And I believe it was the last time he spoke that it was filmed. And I think then people saw the film. Um, and it was like, hey, <laughs> wow, this is really cool. You know, look at this guy. He's engaging, he's dynamic. He's, you know, Mr. Aphasia, look at this guy. And um, so I think it was a turning point because a lot of people suddenly noticed. He was a wonderful actor prior to the stroke, but he still is. We had a research uh, project going, which was all about helping people with aphasia figure out what their goals were and how to pursue them. And so we kept circling around this idea. Can we do a play? Can we do a film? How are we gonna use your skills? to help you move forward in the world. It just became clear, we're going to make a movie, and we're going to take this movie and send it out with Carl so that he can do these talks. I think Carl's story is, is very empowering. He still very much can draw from all of these communication skills to share his story. And they see this guy that had this massive stroke, and he's communicating. He's using his whole body, his face, his actions, just a sigh or sorry, that, that's Carl. He is determined to make it better, to find a way to make it better. Maybe he's found his calling, and it's a good calling um, to be able to help people. And if he's able to go out into the world, and this will be what he's doing now. You know, you talk about making lemonade out of lemons. This is lemonade. I think this is an, an awesome opportunity. The gifts are bountiful. He has so much to impart on people. And um, yeah, I think he can definitely do it. I think Carl can do this. I am absolutely confident that Carl can do this. I know Carl can do it. Never be the same, but almost. <laughs> almost.